Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge and welcome back to Project Hospital, where last time our neurology department went from being incredibly quiet to incredibly busy, to the point where we had to keep adding many, many new beds to both the regular ward over here and the high dependency unit over here. And it was down to some sort of event where lots of people had various brain injuries. I can't quite recall the exact nature of it now, but lots of people came in with things like concussions and migraines and things like that. So that's why it looks so busy right now. It's completely completely rammed up here in neurology. Many, many people. Look at that. There are a couple of beds over there that seem to be empty. But I think maybe what's happened is the people that were in those beds are just now having various examinations and things like that. Look, that person is probably from one of those beds over there. But that's the regular ward looking very busy. And over here, the high dependency unit also looking very busy. However, because we did have to kind of get some beds in in a hurry, it does look a little bit untidy now. Look at that. Those beds kind of just, you know, shoehorned into the middle of that room. And the same over here as well. It looks a little bit untidy, doesn't it? It looks a little bit untidy. Unruly, but there we go there we go it worked and it's okay and we completed the event which is wonderful so now really what we want to do is move time on a bit until we get two more surgeries completed over at traumatology and then we complete that objective there for hang on what do they call protect care so we complete that objective there they then give us sixty thousand dollars which would be very welcome indeed because your yeah, money is looking a little bit low right now. We have had more money than that at this time of day recently. So that's looking a little bit low. Possibly it would be handy to get that 60 grand sooner rather than later. I would like to, if we could, use a bit of that $60,000 to start work on our final department over here. I'd like to get the cardiology clinic in if we could. That would be quite nice. There's no way we're going to get the entire sort of you know, hospitalization bit set up with the money we have. That's not going to happen at all. But if we could get the clinic in, that would be quite nice. So here we go. On until morning. Let's see how we get on. I mean, hopefully we can muddle through without, you know, terrible things happening, events popping up, people dying possibly. Because, yeah, that sort of uh, that objective there keeps ticking up. And we go, yeah, a day without anybody dying, two days without anybody dying. And then somebody very suddenly dies and that comes back down to zero. So be good if we could start moving that as well okay thomas jackson no free bed for ah uh, okay this could be <laughs> this could be a little bit of an issue thomas jackson okay you need to go into high dependency over here in neurology and there is no room at all there's no room at the inn i'm afraid i'm not quite sure where you could go the only thing that I can think we do is possibly make life a little bit trickier for the doctors and the nurses by putting a bed there and a bed there and blocking off that walkway. That might make things a bit tricky. Or actually, maybe down here. Oh no, can we fit one in there? We Hang on, swivel that round. We might not be able to fit one in there. So a bed, a machine, and a thing. It's got to be... Hang on, how wide does that need to be? Yeah, okay, Thomas Jackson, we're on it. We're working it. One, two, three. That's only too wide. That's only too wide. Okay, right, forget what I just said. That's not going to work. Okay, the only other option that I can see to get any more beds in here at all is to maybe forego the big double doors and go for a single door. Maybe go for a single door just here and then we can put a bed in there because the beds are three wide. So we could have bed. Oh, no, hang on. A bed there. I would have to have the door just there. The door would have to be right on the edge. Yeah, because I'd be bed, bed, bed. And then a door just there. Oh, that'd be terrible. And let's move that over. Oh, but there's somebody in that bed, so we can't really move it around. This is awful. This isn't going to work at all. Well, unless we just take that door out in its entirety, just put a bed there and have one door coming in here. Or do we actually have the... It might be better to have the bed there. That might be better. And then you can come in this way and grab people. Maybe that's what we do. I mean, neither is a good solution. This room should be bigger. It should be you know, better shaped, better designed. I mean, I blame the architect of this room. Shoddy job indeed. Um, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, we, we keep that door. We get rid of those doors. I think that might be our best course of action right now. Okay, right, we're going to do it. We're going to ruin the lovely sort of pattern and flow of this room by getting rid of those doors. Unless, hang on, could we, we did sort of think about this before, could we build another high dependency unit over there. The only thing is, the only thing is, we really aren't going to see this problem again, I don't think. We've only got so many people in because they're still here because we dealt with that previous event. That's why they're all in. 
So, I mean, when they all go home, it's going to look relatively empty. And we've seen this before in other departments, like in orthopedics. Orthopedics at one point was completely and utterly jammed to the point where we had to build loads more stuff for it. And I bet now all that sort of extra, we built an extra entire ward, didn't we? I bet that's fairly quiet now. Actually, do you know what? We can go and check. Let's go and have a look, shall we? So pop down to orthopedics. It was that there. Um, yeah, completely and utterly empty. But once upon a time, that was full. Oh, no, hang on. No, not empty. We've got James Williams down there with his broken arm. Um, okay, so yeah, not exactly busy, though. So I think, yeah, maybe, maybe. Do we just send you away? Do we just send you away somewhere else? Rather than having to sort of muddle through and, you know, make, uh, make changes and ruin things and make it look untidy, do we just send you away from it? Although that isn't very many beds in there, is it? That's not very many beds at all. That is a, a poor amount of beds. The only thing I think we could do, possibly, could we pick those rooms up there? Could we pick them up, put them over here, possibly, near to these things? That's okay. It's only around the corner. So if we pick those up and then expand the ward into there, maybe that's what we could do. Because those things are already there. We can move things, I think, can't we? Hang on. Have we got to move? Um, yeah, move a room or selected area. So we can just sort of go like that. Yeah, we can pick that entire thing up and move it to, say, just there. So we'd have to pay for, you know, the floors and the walls again. That'd be okay. And then expand in that direction. That might be a better course of action. What are these rooms? Hang on, what are they? They are, have a click, diagnostic units. Okay, so it's quite convenient that they are there because they're quite near to the patients. But that room, that ward, does need to be bigger. It's got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six. It does have eight beds in it, though. It's got eight beds. <laughs> There's two spare beds there. Two spare there. Can you just put them over there for a bit? Um, Maybe that's our best thing. Maybe that is the best course of action right now. We get those set up over there. Um... I don't really want to do that, but I think we might have to, to just make that a little bit bigger. Okay, right, this wasn't part of the plan. This wasn't part of the plan, but you know what? We're going to have to roll with it. It's going to be fine. So I think we want to get these rooms set up first, don't we? So hang on, how big are these rooms? Go to here, go to neurology, grab us a diagnostic unit room. So they are seven by five. Okay, so we can work with that. So put them there. So they're five by seven. Okay, they're going to look a little bit rubbish compared to that room there, but whatever the case, that's fine. So another five by seven like that. So those two there, like so. And then, yep, yeah, we need to grab the floors and all that kind of the walls. Hang on, we do the floors first. It's a bit easier. So get that in. So pop that over like that. Then go to the walls and we shall drip a drop that wall. Thank you very much. And we'll build the four walls. Right, so get... Hang on, we'll click that and then we'll build the four walls. Thank you. Right, get that in like so. Okay, and then we want to get... Uh, hang on, if we do that, does it bring the door? Does it bring the door? Um, I don't think... I know it does bring the door. Okay, so we can put that like that. I think, has I just successfully moved that all over? Ah, it hasn't taken the door. Hang on, it has... It's copied the door. Okay, so it's left the door there, and it's put a new one over there. Okay, I wasn't expecting that, if I'm completely honest, but there we go. And then grab that room, and take that and put that just there. Okay, so now if we go back to here, does it say we have... No, we still only have two diagnostic... Oh, no, because they're... Oh! It picks up the entire floor plan. It picks up the sort of, yeah, the sort of outline for it as well, the zoning. Oh, that's quite clever. Okay, so they've been moved over. Not quite as convenient to get to those now as it once was, but never mind, never mind. And I think then, yes, over here, we can say, okay, high dependency unit, push that out to there. Then we can go back into here and we can go to there. We can get rid of that wall and we can get rid of that wall. Thank you so much. And then we shall very quickly drip a drop that wall uh, we're on single wall drawing, that's fine. So paste that on like that, and then swivel that round. Right, so change it to that look. 
there we go, that looks nicer. And then grab the floor, do that like so. We're just going under 50 grand. It's not good, is it? It's not good. Right, and now I think what we'll do is, hang on, press the right button, go to here, and we'll just grab that little arrangement there, and then we'll put that, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Where are the doors going to go now? Because now we have a prime opportunity to move the doors around. Do we put, say, a door over here on this side? So a door there to come in, a door there to go out. We don't want loads of doors. We'll just put a door there. Joe, you know we're just going to put a door just there. It's going to be fine. So how about then? Hang on, go back to doors. So get rid of that. That's fine. And then get... Where is... Hang on, drip a drop that, please. Uh, oh, that's just... Oh, no, it is a double door. It is a double door. Wonderful. Right, so pop that in like that. So now we have a door over there. Move the plant over. Very important. The room has become very bright all of a sudden. <laughs> Why has that happened? Somebody switched the lights on. Right, and then go to here. Get rid of that door. Get rid of that door. Okay, and now we can go to here and we can copy that bed and we can put that there. Okay, so another 5,300 monies has gone on that. I mean, it'd be nice if we could make this a little bit less untidy. Just have them running across the sides of the room there. But there we go. We've kind of rejigged that a little bit. And hopefully you can now go over. Are you going over now? Hospitalized waiting for bed. Okay. Thomas Jackson, I hope you appreciate the efforts that we just went to. In practically zero seconds, we've demolished you know, a couple of rooms. We've relocated all the things in those rooms, including you know, installing new wiring and new electrical things and new internet you know, fittings and everything else. And we've uh, retired this and knocked some walls down and some floors. And we've put some new doors in and moved stuff around and magic to bed into existence as well. All for you, Thomas Jackson. You better appreciate that, my good sir. Right. Okay, here we go. So he can come back up here. Nancy Hall, right, okay. <laughs> My goodness me. Nancy Hall needs to come up here and she needs one of these. It's fine. We didn't need that money anyway. Who needs the money? Do you know what? We're going to put... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We've got... We've got that sink thing, haven't we? Move that over into that corner. So pick that up. Shifty that out of the way. Um. Okay, we're going to put another bed on this side. And that can have the window as well. There we go, lovely. Right, there are now multiple beds available. Please stop having people coming up here because it's becoming very expensive and we're going to have no money left. Right, okay, now do that. Couple of beds spare. I mean, it's good. Imagine the amount of money we're going to get. Kate Jones, please don't die. Severe thermal burn. Oh, crikey. You are in a bad way. Hang on, sort all your stuff out. But... Uh, I mean, your yeah, interview, you're about to collapse, so the interview might be limited. Physical exam, severe thermal burn. But where? Where is your thermal burn? If it's on your head, it's different to if it's on your big toe. Um, okay, do an evaluation and then we'll see where you can go from there. Right, okay, come on, come on. Let's try to get through to seven o'clock in the morning, the end of the night shift, without any further incident. Keep people alive. Let's not have people trying to come up here. Oh, six minutes short. Never mind. Thomas Scott. Okay, what can we do? Department doesn't seem to run any, uh, be able to run any more tests. Okay, you've got some sort of virusy thing. You've got a virusy type thing. Okay, right. What you can do is you can go to infectious diseases and they can do some CSF sampling. Hmm, yes, that will certainly be a thing that they can do. They can't do all that other stuff. I quite know why they can't do all that other stuff. Um, oh, an EEG. That's up here, isn't it? Okay, go into... Hang on. Have all those things first as well. Makes her feel a bit better. Also, we could potentially... You might have a, a bad disease, which could cause us problems later on. But you know what? It's fine. It looks more likely you haven't got one. So, okay. And there we go. Seven o'clock. Uh, rooms with critical workload. I should possibly look at that one day. I should look at that, but I'm not entirely sure. Hang on. Critical workload in the day and night. Do we need to worry about this? Nothing critical in emergency. Um, okay, radiology. Critical in the day, critical at night time. That's not good. Looking good in the labs. It's looking good in the labs. Really? Really? Oh, look. They're happy because their bellies are filled. That's quite fun. Um, yep, that's pretty good. Couldn't wash hands over intensive care. So that might be something that we do when we've got all the departments in. 
and the hospital is just, you know, merrily ticking over and everything is fine. Maybe this is what we could do. We could go and look at each of the department's sort of satisfaction metrics over here and try and help out, you know, sort these out. So maybe couldn't wash hands. We put some more sinks around the place, that kind of thing. I mean, that's pretty good over there. That's very good. Hang on, hang on. Have they all got bosses? Has boss, has boss, has boss. That's good. They've got a boss. They've got a boss as well. They like their boss. 13 satisfaction for general surgery. That's wonderful. They've got a good boss. Um, they couldn't dry their hands over there. Slightly bizarre, but okay. They've got a boss. They've got a good boss. They have a boss. Um, admin department doesn't have a boss. But I don't think that's a thing they can have anyway. Yeah, there's no kind of uh, boss thing down there. And pathology has a chief doctor, but there's only a few people in there anyway. Okay, right. That's good. Yeah, maybe we could try and sort this out. So, you're hungry, eh? Maybe we could try and give them some more food options or get some more people. So more people can, you know, take breaks and readily and all that kind of stuff. Maybe that's something we could do when everything is sorted out. However, right now... We're £5,000 down uh, on everything. So, uh, not pounds, dollars. So, we need to get through to 8 o'clock in the morning when hopefully all the overnight stays will pay us huge amounts of money and then they'll clear out these beds and everything will be lovely up in neurology. So, here we go, everybody. Minus four and a half grand flies up to 45 grand, 46 grand. Wow, look at the money pouring in. Four grand from you, 1,300. 4,000, that's very good. And it looks a bit emptier now. Hang on, go to there. Yeah, look at that. Okay, hang on. High dependency, still completely rammed, but that regular ward over there, now looking a lot less busy. Okay, that's really good news. Um, oh, Judy Barclay. We can't work out what is going on. You can help by selecting the next examination because, yeah, Dr. Massey is having a little bit of a difficult time. Okay, we'll give them some treatments first. Because, you're, yeah, they're in your doctor's office vomiting everywhere. So sort that out, please. Um, okay, what's going to help? What's going to help with these? Physical exam, I imagine, has been done, probably. Um, serologic testing. Okay, physical exam. Oral cavity inspection might be quite a good thing to do. Do that. And a temperature measurement as well. Because that does seem like a, a fairly basic thing to do. So there you go. Hopefully that'll help out. Um, right. Can we please get lots of surgeries underway over at Traumatology? That would be really, really lovely. Thank you. Okay, Thomas Scott is having a little bit of a collapse. I think he collapsed earlier, so possibly we do need to look at that. Ah, right. Yes, he's going into a coma. He's had two comas. He's got brain inflammation, which needs antivirals. I think, yeah, he's having them administered, or he's had them. So hopefully that will sort things out. Um, no more wibbly hidden symptoms. So hopefully, now they've actually got the right sort of treatment in, that will stabilise you. So that's quite good. I did just notice that, um, well, we might see it here, actually. I noticed that one of the nurses walked through the lounge like they did just there. So this is yeah, the guest lounge. Somebody walked through there pushing a trolley with a person on it, I think, which I don't think we want to do because you know, this is the, this is the you know, visitor lounge. We don't want the visitors to see people being pushed about on trolleys. That would be quite bad and possibly a little bit upsetting. So I think maybe uh, we could do with getting a little sort of walkway set up round there. And I imagine they'll use that instead. But we'll do that shortly if we have any money left at all. Um, okay, Margaret Thomas is collapsing. Um, you've got wibbly hidden symptoms. Also one of many diagnoses and a wibbly symptom is never good. Right, okay, have all those things. Physical exam. Um, it's either a, vi a virusy thing or some sort of chest thing. Okay, chest, exultation, abdominal palpitation, and temperature measurement. That might whittle things down a bit. That might help out quite a bit. Okay, right, good. We'll get that sorted. They'll help you out. That's all wonderful. Okay, Let, yeah, look, they are walking through here as a little bit of a shortcut. It's not supposed to be for that staff. <laughs> You're supposed to come in here and get some nice drinks and things and you know, have a chat with you know, the family of the patients. Don't just use it as a bit of a, you know, th a thoroughfare type thing. Okay, Elizabeth Green is also collapsing. Lots of collapsing happening today. Um, and no surgery over at Traumatology, which is a little bit sad because we need the cash. Kate Walker is also collapsing. 
It's not looking good, is it? It's not looking good. Oh, there we go. Wonderful. The game's just chucked another event our way. Thanks, game. I think it's an epidemic event. Yeah, I think it is. Food contamination at a local restaurant has caused a serious outbreak of illness. Even though health inspectors have closed the restaurant down, local hospitals must prepare for an increased influx of patients. Well, isn't this just dandy? Right, okay, so I think we should be okay. I think we should be okay. How busy are we looking down here in infectious diseases? Lots of room on that ward there. And do we have any, any quarantine rooms? Yeah, four over there. Okay, we might be okay. That also looks like it's got quite a lot of space too. So, okay. Okay, we might be we might be able to muddle through. I think as well, if we do manage to succeed, we could get some good stuff out of this because we get money, that's quite good, and we're on a bit of a roll on completing the event, so we should get a nice pile of cash. Prestige will go up, which is quite nice as well, and it means that we've completed one of the three epidemic events that the little helicopter icon insurance people want. What are they called again? Quick snap care, those people there. So we've got one of the three events they would like to be completed to finish off that objective. So if we could do this, it would be wonderful. Right, take over all patients. How many are there? Please don't be like 15 patients or whatever. Okay, that looks about 10, is it? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, 10 patients. That is not too bad. Right, okay, as is standard, go and code blue them all first. Right, there we go, everybody's been code blued. Let's get time ticking on nice and quick until we get the first person in, and then we'll see what happens. So here we go, what are we looking at here? Has everybody just got food poisoning, or is it something worse? I do not know, people are seeing doctors, going to waiting rooms, they're being examined. Okay, right, here we go. So James Martin up first. You've either got hepatic fibrosis, cirrhosis or hepatitis B. Okay, this could be quite a tricky thing to work out. Okay, what is the best thing for us to do? Um, I mean, a physical exam would help. That would be quite a good thing. Interview, I think, has already been done. So physical exam is going to do quite a lot. Abdominal palpation. Okay, physical exam, abdominal palpation, temperature measurement. They're quite good. Also, that CRP thing is good for inflammatory and infectious diseases. Is hepatitis B infectious like that? Maybe it's not. Joe, that'll do. That'll do for you. Um, okay, I'll close that down as well because that's confusing. Jessica Wright, hello. You've got pork tapeworm. That does link quite nicely to the sort of you know, the story behind the event. That makes sense. Um, no hidden symptoms, but we will do a couple of those things there anyway, just to make sure that we've covered everything off. And there you go. You can have those things, and I imagine you'll be out of here quite quick. Rachel Wilson. Rachel Wilson is collapsing. She's one of the event people. Um, she's dehydrated. Okay, that's fine. Just dehydration. I mean, it's not fine. It's not good that you've collapsed, but yeah, it's not like you've had you know, slipped into a coma or something. Okay, so we'll give you a physical exam. We will do... Oh, you've got everything. We don't have a clue about you because you came in all dehydrated, and then you've collapsed a bit. Um, okay. Do an abdominal palpation, because why not? And then we do a temperature measurement, and then we'll see what you're like after you wake up a bit. How long have we got? Just under 14 minutes now. Okay, this is fine. Look at that. Jessica Wright's already done. Tick, 10% through. Jane Brown. Okay, vomiting. Have some stuff to stop you doing that, thank you. Um, right, what's going to help over here then? Oh my goodness me. Right, she's got many things. Temperature measurement. Physical exam. Physical exam interview that's a physical exam there's a quite a urinalysis what's that one there speech listening okay right so job one physical exam that makes sense um number two do an abdominal palpation and then we'll come back and see where we are after that jane brown right james martin still no closer oh dear right okay that's a bit unfortunate isn't it um what else could we do blood pressure measurement ah no that's only going to reveal hypertension. That's a high risk thing, and he hasn't got a wibbly symptom. See, I'm I'm getting all right at this now. I'm going to go and work as a doctor next week. I'm not really. Don't worry. Um, blood draw. That might help, although it might take a long time. Um, do that. I think doing that's going to help. Differential diagnosis would also help. Can we send you over to Doctor Dave, please? Doctor Dave, can you do some differential diagnosis on James Martin here? That would help out quite a bit. Okay, Lisa Wright. 
and you've got something terrible wrong with you. I can on physical exam, abdominal palpation, temperature measurement, do the basics. Thank you so much. Okay, Peter Hill. Peter Hill has uh, got a touch of the runs on some muscle paint. Okay, let's sort that out for you. And again, the basics. Do the really simple stuff first. Do that kind of stuff. That'll do. And then come back to us a bit later when that's done. Uh, Jessica Wright. Uh, ah, yeah, you can go home. That's really good. Can the others be like that, please? Oh, hang on. Let's give you some analgesics. Have some analgesics and then go home. Wonderful. Okay, right. Splendid. Um, David Lopez. No idea what's wrong with you. Do all the basics. This is getting very familiar. Temperature measurement. Have that to sort your pain out. And okie doke. Jane Brown back. We go. Right. We've whittled it down to these four here. Um, okay. Right. So what's going to help? What can we do there? Abdominal palpation. Uh, we've done that already. We've done that already, but that didn't find that. Okay. Um, physical exam, I think, is underway. Physical exam. Blood test. Okay. Blood test. Stool analysis. Um, okay. What have you got? I mean, that thing there, that one, I don't know how you say it, esophagitis. That could be discovered possibly with a neck palpation. And then we'll do a blood draw thing. Oh, and differential diagnosis might help as well. So we'll see what we can do with that. Not looking too good on the time, is it? Frank Young. Okay, sort your things out like that. Physical exam. Do a temperature measurement. Do all the simple things. Do... Yeah, you have got an abdominal thing by the look of it. So do abdominal palpation, please. Get that sorted. And then we'll see what we can do. Mary Rodriguez. Primary peritonitis. Isn't peritonitis really bad? I thought peritonitis could kill you if you don't sort it out. Hang on. Have all those things first. I mean, this restaurant here is in very big trouble. <laughs> they gave all these people these problems. That's really awful. Also, the food was so bad that she's got a wibbly symptom. Okay. Physical exam. Abdominal palpation. Temperature measurement. And differential diagnosis. That might whittle things down a bit. Okay, Patricia Clark, you're a new person as well. Please sort your current conditions out. Physical exam, abdominal palpation, temperature measurement, differential diagnosis. There's a pattern. Lisa Wright, we've done temperature measurement. We're down to these two. Okay, differential diagnosis. That will save us all. Um, Rachel Wilson. Oh no, you've got many pages of things that could be wrong with you. Um, okay. What is the best thing to do? Uh, is there anything over here that we could look at particularly? Oral cavity inspection, I don't imagine takes very long. So go and do that. Go and get that sorted. Uh, yeah, what about the fast? No, that doesn't really work, does it? ECG, don't really need that, I wouldn't have thought. Um, evaluation, that might help. I think they're just going to summarise what they know and see if they can draw any conclusions. Um, okay, do those two. Do those two, and we'll see if that helps. It might not help at all. Lisa Wright has salmonellosis. Okay, so salmonella infection. That sounds very, very horrible. Um, okay, have that. Have antibiotics. And head up to internal medicine, if you would be so kind. Thank you very much. All right, that should be you sorted. That should be you done. David Lopez back. We are bloated. Oh, no, have we seen you before? Uh, yes, I think we have. Okay, CRP, inflammatory and infectious diseases. Okay, maybe do that and do an oral cavity thing as well, just whilst you're there, because that makes sense. All right, so get rid of you. Okay, back to Peter. Campylobacteriosis. I've had that and it was horrible. Okay, right, there we go. There we go. Antibiotics. You've got one hidden symptom. I don't think we need to uncover that. It's okay. As long as we get you out the door, it's going to be fine. So there we go. You have that and head up to general surgery. Thank you very much. This is good. This is going okay. We've not got many sort of ticks, but we have at least got quite a few diagnoses in. Um, Rachel Wilson, not with you though, unfortunately. 12 pages of it. Oh dear. I have that for your stomach. Um, I mean, what's going to help? Speech listening. Speech listening and a CT scan. Um, do the chest thing, because we might as well. That could be quite good. Do, hang on, where's the CT scan thing? CRP, do that. Joe, you know actually, do those two. 
Do those two to start with, please. That's going to be helpful. Uh, right, Frank Young has that thing as well. Okay, it's not good, but at least we know what it is. That was general surgery, wasn't it? Um, yeah, okay. Right, so you head out over there and they will help you out. That's going to be fine. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Right, two people done now. That's good. Lisa Wright, you can even go home. We've treated you so well, you can clear off right now. That is brilliant. Less people for us to be bothered about. Okay, David Lopez, still not entirely sure. Not entirely sure. Um, okay, physical exam we've done. Interview we've done done interview we've done physical exam these are all physical exam and interview things gastroscopy um i mean it could be that it could be, it might be that there though i mean what do we do with that that's a physical exam crp okay we've done that already that didn't do anything okay never mind um a blood draw that might be quite good blood draw might be quite useful or yeah a ct scan get a ct scan do that because that might whittle things down and rachel wilson oh no <laughs> 12 minutes left and you've got 12 bajillion things that might be wrong with you um right okay how about you have um maybe not an ultrasound thing do a blood draw. Hang on, that elisa sampling thing is quite good i think somebody in the comments said do that more often we'll go and do some of that please and then possibly get you in on a CT scan as well. Actually, differential diagnosis might help. Uh, Dr. Oakmoon, can you do a differential diagnosis on that person, please? Thank you so much. That'd be lovely. Um, Peter Hill. Yep, you can go home. Wonderful. Farewell, Peter Hill. We're now managing what? Um, seven people. Okay, Patricia Clark. Yay, we've figured out what's wrong with you. That's very good. Have all these things to make you feel better. And you need to go to internal medicine. There you go. Right, another person sorted out. This is good. May Rodriguez. Primary peritonitis. Possibly should get that pretty quickly. That is general surgery. Let's get you down for abdominal surgery. Um, I don't think we need... Hang on, she's got a wibbly symptom though. She's got a wibbly symptom. Okay, right. Do all those things. Get all that stuff sorted, please. Possibly even with the wibbly symptom. Do we put her in high dependency? I think maybe that might be a good idea. Okay, so pop you into there. So we've got four people done now. Oh, we're flying through. Um, you've got peptic ulcer disease. Sounds thoroughly unpleasant. Right, so get that sorted. That is a general surgery. And no wibbly hidden symptoms. So you're going to... Oh, hang on. Proton pump inhibitors. Have that, please. Um, and Rachel Wilson. Oh, oh, okay. Down to only five pages of diagnosis now. Okay, okay. We're whittling it down. 11 minutes 36 to figure out what's going on here. Um, I think let's go for, let's look over here. Blood draw is always good. Get that done. So hopefully that'll help out quite a bit. And then, I mean, what are all these things? So pneumonia, possibly rabies, hepatitis. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, how about, I mean, would a CT scan help? Maybe a CT scan. We'll go down that route and hope it helps. You have got that. You can go home. This is marvellous. Yep. Okay. Cheerio. This is going to be good. If we can do this, 11 minutes 20-ish to pull this off. If we can, that would be magnificent. That would be really good. Imagine the money we'd get. It is coming up to um, the end of the day shift. So things might slow down a little bit. It's not ideally timed, if we're honest. But, okay, you can go home, Patricia Clark. And also that does mean that in a few minutes, we're going to pay out the wages for the day shift. The money's going to come down. Peptic ulcer disease, you can go home. Okay, so the people that we've dealt with have all pretty much gone home again. There's only four people left. Um, okay, David Lopez, still completely clueless as to what's wrong with you. Do those top two and a blood draw. Just do those basic things. Let's maybe get that stuff done right. Eight o'clock. Money down to 62 grand. Not too bad. Not too bad. We've had worse for sure. 70% now. So we've treated. We're looking after somebody who has been treated, which is good. That's a good thing. Um, okay, James Martin. Ah, here we go. Right, give you all those things there. But you've got hepatic fibrosis. Have we looked at this before? Hepatic fibrosis represents an accumulation of scar tissue in the liver. 
Ooh, it sounds very horrible. Right, general surgery for you, my good sir. And get A1AT replacement, aren't they in Star Wars? Right, hang on. So have that, have corticosteroids and no wibbly hidden symptoms. So that's going to be fine. Okay, do we do a CRP just to maybe uncover a symptom? Um, well, yeah, that's fine. We just did anyway. So there we go. Right, so we're down to just the three people. Although Rachel Wilson, we are struggling with. We're having a very tricky time figuring out what's wrong with you, Rachel. Um, could we do some of the stuff over here? So could we do, say, what's going to help? There's so many potential things. Um, abdominal palpation didn't find anything, did it? Blood pressure measurement. I think we've done that. Speech listening. Have we done that? I um, don't know if we've done that necessarily. Let's do neck palpation. Do a blood pressure measurement. Those two things might also help out a little bit. So there we go. We'll go for those options. We'll see if that helps. I think we've got a little bit of time left. Okay, that didn't help at all. Hooray. <laughs> okay, do that and do that then. Get those other two done. Let's see if Dr. Myers can work their way through those particular exams. Is it whittling it down? No, James Martin needs to be hospitalised. Oh, okay. Um, go on then. That's fine. <laughs> In you go. Do I have to tell you to do that? Ear exam. Didn't help at all. Of course it didn't. Um, right. Do we do heart monitoring? Do we? That's long-term heart monitoring. I think we might need to do some of these things. Serologic sampling. That might help. As might, I don't know, microbial stuff. Would that help? I need a little checklist here saying try these things next because this there's so many options. There are so many things. Um, yes, yeah, speech, listening, and most of it's physical exam. To be fair, physical exams do seem to pick up quite a lot of these things. Um, do you know what? We'll go for microbial sampling. We'll try and get that done. Um, okay, you've got anemia, so give you vitamin supplements. Oh, we're struggling with you as well. Um, okay, differential diagnosis. That will save us all. It is a wonderful thing. Okay, still down to the three of you. Come on, you three. Eight and a half minutes to get this sorted. Please let us do this. Okay, David Lopez, down to three now. Okay, do some... What's going to help? What's going to help? That is physical exam, interview. We've done that interview. Physical exam, physical exam, interview, gastroscopy, and CBC testing. Okay, that might help, but that's for septic shock. Yeah, and he's not got a wibbly thing. Do we move you to where you can do a gastroscopy? Can we move you? That's general surgery, isn't it? Maybe we move you to there and we do a gastroscopy. Put you in regular hospital. Gastroscopy on you, please. Priority. Stat. Make it happen. Rachel Wilson, still completely clueless. Maybe we do the same to you. Put you into general surgery. Interview gastroscopy and then do those things as well because why not it might help it might not i'm not entirely sure oh hang on james martin james martin is sorted okay so have that that's fine but you're now a green tick okay that's good that's good so now it's just the two peter moore um oh no you're not an event person okay it's very sad peter moore i'm sure they'll sort out right james martin you're fine now you're okay it's all going to be fine. Do you know what? Back to computer control with you, James Martin. And I think as well, hang on. Mary Rodriguez. Are you a tick on this, Mary? Um, yes, you're a tick as well, Mary. So how about we return you? Oh, no, you've still got wibbly symptoms. Hang on. That's not good. Microbial sampling physical exam. No, we have to keep an eye on you. We need to make sure that you're okay because you could collapse and that will be bad. So keep an eye on you. Right, okay, I'm now... Getting nervous. <laughs> the time is ticking down quicker than I'd like. Peter Moore's having another collapse. He's got abdominal blast. Oh my goodness me. Oh, he's in a very bad way. He's got a foreign object present, or many of them. He's got deglow skin. His liver's damaged. Blast wound, penetrating wound. Was Brad Deepnia abnormally slow breathing? He's in a very bad way. That is not good. Replantation. Um, orthopedics. He'd need to go to orthopedics, but of course he's not. He's not in a good state to do that. Oh dearie me! Oh, that's not good. Right, Mary. Have we figured out? Ah, there we go. Alveolar collapse, oxygenography, whatever that is. 
and then, that's your wibbly symptom, put you back to computer control. I think that's you sorted. Oh no, Mary, ah uh, yeah, hang on. Mary's gone away from a tick, but she'll come back to a tick again soon. It's fine. Six minutes, 33. <laughs> Uh, renovation of a nearby clinic causes 50% more patients to come to the internal medicine department. Oh, lovely. A nice day out at internal medicine. Very good. Right, here we go. Move time on quick. That's going to come down so fast. Oh, now I'm not entirely sure that we can do this. Oh, right. We've whittled it down to these. They're all internal. That's internal medicine. They're all infectious diseases. I would say, given that it was from a restaurant, it's going to be salmonellosis. So I think we take a gamble on that. We put you into internal medicine and we give you the correct things for that. I think that's what we do with Rachel Wilson there. We'll see if that works. <laughs> okay, hang on a minute. Ah, there we go. The lab did work that out. Yes, okay, good. We are the finest doctor in the land. This is brilliant. Um, okay, back to just you two. And, oh, we've done it. They did the thing. They did the thing. They completed... The, um, the five surgeries. So we've been given 60 grand. Oh, it is a joyous day. Right, hang on a minute. What's their next one? Successfully finished two accident events in a row. I will admit, I will admit, I don't really like the reliance on the complete this many event things. I don't really like that so much. I like the other ones where it was like, you know, have this many patients come through or you know, build this or do that. I like the more simple ones. These seem a little bit, it seems a little bit sort of, it's like it's hard work to get a prestige bonus of 15% for one day. It's quite a tricky thing to do. Three epidemic events, we're doing one right now. And look at the amount of effort that's going into it. You get three, so yeah, prestige bonus 20% for one day. Oh, that's not very much at all. So they do seem to be a lot of work now for very little reward, but there we go. We've got one person left, David Lopez. Right, Rachel Wilson, you're fine. Back to computer control with you. You're gonna be okay. It's just David Lopez. Oh, hang on. Gastritis. <gasps> We've done it. Another 20 grand. Seven events in a row. One epidemic event done. That is wonderful. Okay, Joe, you know what? Back to uh, computer control with you. We've now got some money to play with. And there we go. We did it. There you go, game. You threw that at us and we handled it sort of adequately, I would say. Maybe not brilliantly, but we handled it sort of okay. Now, could we... Hang on. I'm on the wrong floor. I was thinking... I was thinking, we could we get... Oh, hang on a minute. Peter Moore's having a collapse. Um, oh, you're the chappy who's in a really bad way. You're in a really, really bad way. Um, yeah, we still can't move you. I, I fear the worst for Peter Moore. I think maybe we might possibly lose him because he's been involved in something quite bad. Um, is it worth maybe not getting the entire clinic up and running, but maybe just getting a kind of floor plan type thing? It's going to look... Very similar to this just here, but we do want a little kind of walkway between, a little sort of gap between them. So maybe we could get that kind of implemented. Maybe we could do that. I think let's get through to the morning. We'll fly on to the morning. We'll get to seven o'clock to pay the night shift wage, get to eight o'clock to get the money in, and then we'll see what we've got left to play with. But yeah, the money is looking a little bit better now, which is marvellous. I like that. Thank you for the lovely monies game. Oh, that's quite good. Look at that overnight. No rooms with critical workload. That must mean that things are working okay. Right, okay. So seven o'clock, the money's down to 105 grand. That is still quite good. That's quite good. Okay, so happy with that. And then in not too long, we're going to get paid a load more money from the people who've spent a lovely night at our lovely hospital. And then we'll see what that goes up to. 150 possibly? 158? 159? Okay, that's pretty good. And there is a surgery going on. What's happening over here? Hello, it's Peter Moore. It's the chappy who's got all the terrifying injuries. Are they going to keep him alive? This would be amazing. I don't quite know what they're doing. Just dancing a little jig next to him. <laughs> What's that? Can you just hurry up and get on with it? Doing some weird dancing. Okay, they're doing his surgery, his replantation, I imagine that is. Okay, so getting on with that. Can you do his um can you sort his leg out as well, please? Because he's got a femoral fracture. If you could do that while you're there, while you've got your scrubs on, that'd be amazing. Don't think they are. They're taking him away. But okay, that's fine. Now Jessica Robinson's collapsing. She's just a bit thirsty. It's okay. Give her a drink. It'll be fine. They'll sort that out. They'll muddle through with that. Okay. So $171,000 now. 
which is wonderful. And we might get a bit more because people are coming to internal medicine, which is nice. Right, okay, I think then, rather than doing another event, because we could trigger an event, we could go, do you know what? Yeah, let's do an accident event. I think we've done one big event just there. Let's get this thing kind of mapped out. Only the clinic. We'll just do the clinic because it's going to look a bit like this. It's not going to look too dissimilar. Um, the big question is what colour do we do this? Because it should be red. It should really be red, but we have got a few red departments. But yeah, cardiology should be red, really. So yeah, we've got red over here for pathology. Then you've got the pink there for internal medicine. And then red as well is down here for intensive care. Because, you know, red means danger. These people's lives are in danger. Um, but that's on that floor. That's on that floor. I think we can make cardiology red over here. That would make sense, wouldn't it? So... The only thing is, who's going to own that corridor there? There's going to be a corridor coming around here. Do you know what? Let's put that in right now. And that can be owned... That can be owned by neurology. Let's have that owned by these people over here. So hang on a moment. Let us just drip a drop that corridor for a second. And we'll just do that look. Like that. Just link that together. And then we grab the floor... And we'll put the floor in like so. And then we'll go back to the wall. Shouldn't that first, really? And then take that out and take that big long bit out just there. Like that. There we go. Um, have I taken that bit of wall out as well? Okay, right. Hang on a second. Hang on. We might need to put some uh, put some glass things in there. Oh, no, hang on. I've taken the entire wall out. A bit breezy at the minute. Tiny bit breezy around the hospital, but it's okay. <laughs> We're going to muddle through. It's going to be brilliant. There we go. And, um, yep, hang on, hang on. Glass thing of bobs, because it does look good. I, I do quite like that. It works well, I think. Right, there we go. And hang on a second. Very important. We need ownership of that corridor. Because there we go. Get that round the corner. That is neurology. And then put that round to there. And, okay, put that to there. And then there you go. It all links up. Wonderful. Right. So a nice loopy corridor thing. And then, yeah, we want to do the same, but for cardiology over here. So cardiology, I've rotated it around the wrong way. Hang on, I didn't want to do that. That's why I was confused. There, like that. So we want a toilet for them as well over there. There is one there, but you have to go through that reception. So we'll kind of mirror what they've got over there. So hang on a minute. So get a restroom. So restroom is seven by five. Okay, so let's do that. So that's seven by five. That's okay. And then we can have the reception, which is... I like the markers on this. I do like the markers, the grey sort of line showing you where things are matching up. That does help quite a bit. And then get a reception. How big is that reception? That is 15 long. That's quite a big reception, isn't it? Okay, but it works, obviously. So 15, like that. And then three cardiology offices that are five by seven because they fit in those gaps perfectly like so wonderful okay so that's that sorted and then we're gonna have oh hang on hang on very important over here we need the cleaning closet just pop that in into that corner there and i think that will do for now so I think, yeah, we're just going to wall that off because we don't know what's going to go over here. What do we need for hospitalisation? We need diagnostic units. No great surprise. Regular wards, high dependency units, on-call room nurses station, cardiography units, sonography, lounge, operating rooms. So nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing kind of exceptional, nothing unusual, just regular stuff, but to do with hearts and such like, and you know, your cardio system or whatever. Um, okay, yeah, I think that looks okay. We do need to get a corridor coming in like this, though. So run that like that, and then down to there like that for now. So I think, yeah, we can get that in. We just sort of wall that in for now. That shouldn't be too much of a bother. So if we get just the floors and the walls and stuff done, and then maybe leave it there, possibly... Because I think that'll be okay. Next time we come in and we just... We could kit it out. Look, it's not going to take that long. The rooms are kind of all the same. So we'll kit it out. And then next time when we come back, we'll get the staff. And then we'll, you know, sort of uh, get it up and running. I think that could be quite fun. We'll do that. We'll leave it on a bit of a who's going to join us in cardiology cliffhanger. That would be exciting. Um, right, okay, hang on a minute. Get the walls. 
that's a corridor and we want it to be a lovely shade of red okay so let's get this bit in over here then so draw that across like hang on that's gonna be no no not like that is it it's gonna be more like that it's kind of gonna be like that but then with a bit there and then of course we take that bit out because that's very silly okay there we go so like that then we grab the wall of that and we turn that red and that's our little cleaning cover thing i should have the floor normally do the floors first ah it's okay whatever right then do that turn it red that can be the bathroom walls and then over here grab these turn those red and we'll have three of these thank you very much so one and that's that's not gone at all well two like that and three right okay nice and easy then get the floors because these should be fairly straightforward so reception floor looks the same and the uh, waiting area floor looks the same as the other one and the bathroom floor i think doesn't even change color because there's no point so there we go and these are going to change color a bit so i'll have that in a lovely shade of red plop that in like that and then we've just got the corridor bit out there so do that have that like that run that across there run that in front of that and there we go oh hang on not there we go because there's a glaring error just there hang on a second <laughs> Get rid of that big wall just there, please. And that opens that up quite nicely. And then we need the um, the big windows. One there and one there. And there we go. The front of the hospital probably looks all right. We do need to do the outside. I think somebody else mentioned it in the comments and said it's a bit of a boring, drab disgrace. It is. It's rubbish, the outside of the hospital. We will deal with that at some point. But um, okay, there we go. That's all that done. And then again, it's just going to be a very similar setup. I mean, in terms of that, we could just sort of copy that entire setup and paste it into here and then just change the color could we could we do that just to make life easy uh, we've got an okay amount of money so just grab that and then rotate it round so it's like um yeah that's hang on the sinks no i want it like that i think we're gonna have it like that i kind of want i want to mirror it really but i don't know that's going to annoy me i want the the things across there but then i want the sink so i want to mirror that not rotate it i need to mirror it okay no we can't do that then we can't do that no that that's not going to happen that's not going to happen um but yeah, i think that's okay that's a good start isn't it that's the good kind of floor plan that's a very basic sin and then oh hang on hang on i say that i'm, I'm telling a complete fib hang on floor over there red sorry janitor room i forgot about you there and you're gonna get a window as well how luxurious there we go. Perfect. So I think with that done, we will wrap things up for now because you know, I think we did that great big event and we've done various other bits and bobs. And I think, yeah, this is a good start. This is a good start to get this done. So when we come back, we'll get this all populated with stuff because there's nothing here, of course. We'll get the room set up and the doors and put the bathroom in, get all those things kind of put in. We'll hire probably, how many people are we going to hire? So two people in there. So two janitors two receptionists that's four probably five six so six with the two doctors on the day shift maybe seven possibly eight people so another eight spins on the wheel of names the wheel of names is sort of running out of names again it probably doesn't need that many more names it'll need quite a lot to get this department up and running because you know there's you know, quite a lot when we get the whole hospitalization thing in but once that's done I think that'll be, you know, a few more names would be helpful, but I think we can muddle through. I think we'll be okay because we're just going to add a few people here and there to make things more efficient, I think, in the future. But I don't think we're going to be building any grand new big things. We might get some more labs in over here to help out with the blood work and such like that could be quite handy. But um, yeah, so again, if you do want any names added to the Wheel of Names, and you know, if your name is on there, feel free to suggest other ones. I know cat names, family member names, anything like that, whatever you like. Chuck some names in and we can always pop them onto the Wheel of Names and we'll see if that name comes up and ends up as somebody working in the hospital. But uh, but yeah, if you want to do that, then please do so. Just leave a comment and let me know and we'll see what we can do with it. But yeah, I think we'll finish up for now. Come back next time, get our cardiology department properly up and running rather than just the kind of floor print over here type thing. So there we go. That's what we can do next time. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do so 
subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Project Hospital. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. The City of Cupboard, it can be full of geeks, very loyal geeks to me. It's this sort of stripy hill. That's interesting. Oh, Strappy Mountain. Sorry, I, I downgraded you to a hill. It really irritate the Norwegians. Everyone had gold. People were lying on beds of gold. They were eating gold. They were trying to wash their hair with gold. There was gold literally everywhere in our empire.